Hello everyone, welcome to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. Well, I'm making a video, and this is going to be the first in a, and yet another series of videos. And this is a, what I'm calling the Motor Series. And I've had a very considerable number of people ask me about motors. And when you're going to restore a machine, if, you're, if your machine is electric, which many of yours are, not counting those that are treadle machines, you're going to probably wonder, you know, what should you do to restore a motor or at the very minimal, how, how do you maintain a motor? What do you do to, to give a motor maintenance? Now, motors do not require maintenance in the same way that, for example, places on your machine, uh, for example, these are the oiling points. So you would definitely, you're going to oil your machine, you're going to keep your feed dogs clean on a regular basis. But for a motor, this is really something that... Um, is, this is part of a restoration or an overhaul process. It's not something that those of you who are simply wanting to sew on your machines need to do. It's not part of normal maintenance, so don't, don't take it that way at all. Uh, first thing, of course, I want to mention, and this, this is, would seem obvious, but <laughs> again, anytime you're going to do anything with your, with your motor, you want to unplug it. So this machine is unplugged. It's nowhere near electricity, and that's what we want. Uh, it's common sense, but it's always important to, just as a reminder, we should always remind each other of these things. Now, what you're looking at, of course, is, it says Dressmaster, but, but this is actually a um, friction rubber pulley friction drive motor that is used for a white rotary sewing machine. It says Dressmaster, but that's because the white company, uh, they made Dressmaster models, they made Kenmore models, but they were all the same technology. They were all made by the white sewing machine company. Now, a couple of things about this motor and motors in general. Uh, <clears throat> the rest of the series is going to, uh, I'm going to try to illustrate to all of you different sewing machine motors that you might come across when looking at vintage sewing machines. Because remember, we're talking about generations of, of sewing machines and over time, you know, they made changes, they made updates and they would come out with new motor designs. They all work in much the same way they they take uh, electricity obviously and apply power so that you get power to your machine without having to treadle it that doesn't sound earth shattering today but the first machines that could be electrified it was a pretty big deal as you might imagine now over the years <clears throat> a lot of things uh not a lot of things changed in electric motors but a few of them did and we're going to talk about those today uh, <clears throat> the main things we're going to do today, I've already demonstrated for you all in a different video, putting on a new uh, rubber pulley, which you can, of course, purchase. If, you, if you're not aware of that, um, you can uh, look at my video on how to install a new rubber pulley. It's a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty simple thing to do. You can access it. You don't have to take anything off because machines back in these days, you know, the motor's sitting here. It's literally uh, on the back of the machine. We have access to it. Now... Uh, let's see what else to mention to you the primary things I'm going to talk about today are two areas of this sewing machine motor okay this is a uh, this motor excuse me this motor design goes further back than this machine does but this is a 1940s machine uh, but this again this motor was in production for many years before then and there are a couple of things you'll want to note and I'm going to zoom in here for just a second and I want you to see, and I'll tilt the motor toward you because it's on a spring. This motor has two of these. What are these? These are access screws to the brushes that are part of the motor. And of course, I'll show you what that looks like if you've never seen a motor brush before. Uh, it doesn't look like a paintbrush, but um, anyway, they are held in place against what's called the commutator of the motor which is a, a big copper ring that the brushes push against. Now, there are two of these. There's one here, and then there's one underneath where my finger is down here. And they're sort of, you know, they're symmetrically opposed, and they're kind of mirrors of each other, and they're the same thing. And I'm going to take both of them out, and, uh, and I'll show you why in just a moment. <clears throat> the other thing that we're going to look at, and I'm going to give you guys a different camera angle when I do this, but sitting below on this particular rotary mower, um, is a, uh, there are two little access uh, uh, spots, if you will, for what's called a grease wick. 
not an oil wick in this case. There are machines that have oil wicks uh, for, their, for their bobbin case areas, but these are grease wicks. Now, <clears throat> sewing machine motors have, on each end of them normally, they have bearings. And if <clears throat> I thought I actually would show this to you, this is not a bearing from this motor. This is a bearing, it's a reproduction, and it can be purchased for uh, the Singer Slantomatic motors. And I'm going to do one of my uh, motor series videos will be on that motor and I'll revisit this. But I wanted you to see this. Isn't it funny that for some motors you can still get new reproduction bearings? It just, you know, it just shows you how many Singers were made. But anyway, uh, a bearing, basically, if you see the, the little center hole here, the drive shaft of the motor will rest here. Right? And then as it spins, it has to turn on something that, that uh, provides um, uh, uh, you know, a reduction in friction so it can spin without getting hot. And inside, behind this little centerpiece, are um, small ball bearings. And of course, it spins around those bearings. And bearings can last a long time, and they, they typically use... Um, grease. Now there will be exceptions to that as we get into motors from the 1960s and I'll show that in yet another motor video in the series. But anyway, for today I just wanted to show this to you. Again, this is not the bearing that goes with this motor, but I, I don't have one for this motor to show you. The reason this is important is that as we go through time and even this motor design eventually uh, would change where the bearings no longer had access where you could put grease into them. They were starting later on, again we see this beginning in the 60s where they start to create what they call lifetime bearings or sealed bearings. This is where they put grease in the bearing and they tell you it'll last a lifetime. Well, if you're dealing with an heirloom quality machine you know that a lifetime isn't forever. So, uh, but today I wanted to show you how to check your motor brushes, how to clean the commutator without taking the motor apart, and then also how to access the grease wicks. Because the grease wicks, it's a really cool thing to be able to access these because we can clean them out, we can put new grease in, and yes, we can even put new grease wicks in there. And the wick acts as a way to sort of funnel the grease that's going to be put in this little compartment down here sort of shaped like a cylinder. You'll see it when I take it apart. Um, and, and in doing this, we are going to be able to see uh, basically how lubrication feeds these um, uh, bearings and why they still work. This is why some of these motors still run after all these years, because their bearings somehow got lubrication. So let's start at first. Anyway, you will see um, later on, I don't know if you guys, let me tilt the camera and you'll see I actually have got down here a little syringe with grease and the grease I'm going to use here is the Singer lubricant grease from the red tube. It doesn't matter that it's Singer and not a Singer machine, don't worry about that. I've got cotton swabs and I have rubbing alcohol and you'll see in a minute why we're going to need those. So let's go back to the motor. Try not to get you guys seasick here with the camera. Okay, um, I'm going to wedge I'm going to put a little wedge here for the motor and I'm doing that so that so that I can get the motor tilted toward you guys just a little bit. It'll help you in terms of what you're seeing and that's all I'm doing. Um, there's a, The motor is spring-loaded so it's designed to tilt back a little bit. Now let's zoom in a little bit more. See how that comes out. I still got some natural light here which I'm working with. Now. I'm going to take a screwdriver. I'm not using my screwdriver tip set, and the reason is, very simply, these screws typically are not all that difficult to get out. Now, there's a little uh, helpful hint here, and I highly recommend you guys uh, uh, sort of consider doing this when you open this screw. First of all, remember, these screw uh, caps, they're little caps that screw in, they screw into metal, but they are made of plastic, okay? So you want to, don't be rough with them. They're, they're hard plastic and they're old. So I'm going to turn, and it turned fairly easily for me. If it ever sticks for you, you may want to consider a, 
um, a tiny bit of WD-40. Don't put a lot because we're not, we don't want a lot of, we don't want liquids in this motor at all. Now, here's the other trick, guys. You see I'm turning this, but I'm holding it down. Let me zoom back out just a little bit. You can see more what I'm, what I'm, what I'm doing here. I am holding this down with the, with the uh, screwdriver as I turn. When this, when this piece comes loose, you want to be ready to hold on to it with your fingers. Why? Because there is a spring behind it, because the spring pushes the motor brush uh, where it needs to be. And if you do not hold this, and you uh, unscrew the cap, and you keep unscrewing, uh, it's very possible it's going to go flying. And you really don't want to have to be crawling around on the floor looking for it when it does. I know this from experience. So I'm willing to share my, my what, you know, sometimes you learn things the hard way here. So notice I'm turning the screwdriver, but here I'll zoom back in again. You guys can see more closely what my fingers are doing. So I'm going to hold on to this cap while I'm unscrewing it. And as soon as it comes loose, let's see if it's ready. Okay. I think I've screwed uh, all the threads up, but I've got it between my, let's go. I'll move my thumb and finger, make it easier for you guys to see. There you go. Okay, so I've got it there. I'm going to pull and I'm going to still do this, do this control. You see the spring right behind there? The spring is sitting right there and I don't want it to go flying because it's under tension. Now I've let it up gently. Okay, now I've got the little plastic screw cap and you can see that it has a little notch because that notch is designed to uh, fit right in the top of this spring, which is round. It looks like a little miniature slinky. Now, I'm going to gently tug on this and see, oh, I've, I'm having a good day today because the brush came right out. It did not fuss or fight. Sometimes they stick, okay? They don't always come out so easily, but this one did. Now, let's pull this up here and show you. If you have never seen a motor brush before, you are looking at a brush okay, that came out of a sewing machine motor. Let me see, make sure I can't tell if this is actually going into, coming into focus or not. Now, there's something else I, I want to show you while we've got the brush here in front of the camera. Notice that, let's put this behind something white that you can see it more easily. I want to see if you guys can see this. Now, take a look at the brush. If you look at the very tip of it, I'm going to try to be still here. Sorry, I'm trying to get a good spot here and then I'm going to try to hold it still. I don't know if any of you can see this, but the, but the bottom of this brush, brush edge has a curve to it. Okay, it's a slight arch. And the reason it has this arch is because it um, has been pushing against the commutator, which is a round ring. So when we put this back in, See if I can hold the brush at a different angle. You may be able to see it in the light. Yeah, see that, guys? There's a curve on the end of the on the end of the motor brush. Again, let me let me see if I can put it behind something that gives a little contrast so you can see that. Okay, so there's a little that was me. Sorry, there's a little curve here, and when we put the brush back in, we want to put it with the curve facing away from us. Okay, so. Um, this curve, this arch, is actually going to face uh, to my right, okay? And that way I'll, I'll be able to put the brush and it'll be happy, it'll be seated back on the, curve, the curved surface of the commutator, which again looks like a big round copper ring. If you don't do this, the brush will work, but it will be unhappy and it will, it will, uh, it will run roughly for a while until it reseats itself. So it's, it's really helpful for you and the machine and the brush to, uh, to be able to, to play nice together. Now, we got the brush out. What can I do with that? The spring feels good. Uh, the brush, um, brushes last a long time. A lot of times, many times, those of you who open this up, you are not gonna have to replace the brushes. Now, people have different rules for, you know, when they think brushes should be replaced. I think once you get less than a quarter of an inch, you should go ahead and replace them. Some people do it, uh, three eighths uh, of, of, of a length on the brush. It depends on how much sewing you think you're going to do. But these brushes last, 
They can last years, again, depending on the number of hours of sowing. But I can tell you, uh, in the, what, what did I say, nine years or something that I've been doing this, eight years, I can't remember. Um, I've only ever had to replace brushes like three times, but I like to check them because it tells me a lot about um, uh, you know, the wear level of the motor sometimes. Okay, now, before we do anything else, I've got an old t-shirt here I'm using as a rag, and I'm gonna take the brush in my hand, and I don't really need any cleaner. I'm just gonna wipe it off with this t-shirt, and what's coming off is mostly just carbon, maybe some of the dust that came off the brush. Um, some people will try to clean these. I don't like putting any kind of chemicals or cleaner on her cleaning cleaner on them, sorry. And as you can see, you know, it, it really, it cleaned up well with me just wiping it off and that's really all I needed. The main thing that I want to think about when cleaning these is actually the spot that they came out of. Now, some of you, you can go online, uh, you will see uh, videos of people who are cleaning the commutators of electric motors and they have methods to do this. And some of them have done a really great job and some of them not, but they go in and they sand the commutator surface because it, it forms, the commutator surface ends up with carbon, a layer of carbon on it sometimes over the years, and it will also get uh, sort of a patina, not unlike the way you know a copper penny can do this uh, sometimes. So I have decided, and I used to take every motor and I would literally hone down the commutator with a fine grade of sandpaper. And it did okay, but of course, as many of you know, and you will discover if you ever do uh, a sanding of a motor commutator, copper is a very soft metal. And once that copper has worn away, you know, your commutator is pretty much useless and so is pretty much your motor. So I decided and I've had really good luck with this method. I call this more, a more gentle commutator cleaning, and I'll show you how that's done. I'm going to take, um, got my alcohol here, but I want my little jar. Uh, I'm gonna get my jar of alcohol. Okay, I got my little glass jar that I like to work with. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to take, uh, now this is, this is not the 50% the alcohol. This is like the 91% uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol. You know, it comes in different, different uh, concentrations. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but I have an old uh, piece of cotton cloth here that I have put down and it's double, it's double layered. And I put this on the surface of my table and my machine. I think I mentioned to you all before in terms of cleaning the painted surfaces of machines, any kind of cleaner or solvent, and most certainly alcohol. You really want to protect your table, your machine, because that alcohol will dissolve lacquer. It can dissolve the paint on your machine, and it can also dissolve, it most certainly will dissolve the lacquer on your table, and that would be a shame. So protect things, get things ready, take your time, and, and get things set up properly before you start doing this. Now, I, what I've done is I've taken this cotton swab and I have put dipped one end into the alcohol. Now I'm going to take this swab, okay, and I'm going to take it and just very slowly, gently put it down into the uh, motor brush shaft. And it's going to stop. It, you know, the shaft is not that deep because it's going to hit the commutator. Now, because I've got my motor tilted toward you guys, I don't have it engaged here. So I, I, turning the hand wheel won't move it because of course this is a beltless motor design, one of, its, uh, one of its advantages, if you will. But I'll simply come over here to the drive pulley and I will turn it. And of course, it's going to turn this way because the uh, hand wheel on these rotaries turns away from you. Remember, we're on the back of the machine. So I'm going to uh, Turn this like so. And while I turn the drive shaft, and we would do this, uh, we would be doing, we would be moving the hand wheel if this was a machine like many that has a belt. Um, but the principle is the same. We want to turn the shaft of the motor. Now you'll notice I've got the cotton swab here in the dry, in the, in the uh, brush shaft. Now I'm just going to turn this slowly. I don't have to turn it fast, right? And I don't have to turn it that far. Just give it a couple of, of uh, turns there. Now, let's see what we got. Oh wow, look at that, guys. 
Look at all the carbon I was able to pull off of there, right? That's a pretty big amount. And that's not surprising. There's nothing wrong. You know, this is pretty common. You would expect to see this. Now, I'm going to take the dry end, okay? And I'm going to put that down into the shaft and I'll turn the pulley, uh, the pulley shaft again on the motor. I'm going to turn it a few times. Now, come out and I have, I still have uh, some carbon on the end here, not as much, but uh, let's see, I'm going to I'll take a, a cotton swab and once again, I'm going to put it down. This is again, I wet this cotton swab with alcohol on one end and I'm going to put it down, down into the shaft where the brushes go. And I'm going to hold it here. You don't, you don't force it. You don't jam it. It's not like I'm trying to smash it into the motor. It's not necessary. Just put the weight of your finger above and it's fine. Okay. You just need it to stay in contact with the commutator. You're not trying to bond it there. Now, turn the shaft to the motor. Give it a few rotations. And now the wet end of my cotton swab has come out. It's still uh, soiled, but not nearly as soiled as it was the first time. Let's see if I can get these in the camera there. There you go. So you can see the difference between the two. But I'm going to go over here and take the dry end of my uh, swab and, and dry up any of the alcohol. The alcohol won't stay wet for long, but again, I'm very careful. And look, I'm still getting, I'm still getting carbon coming off. Some of this is going to be uh, dust from the brushes. Some of it is going to be uh, in the little uh, shaft itself. But most of the black that you see coming off is coming off of the commutator. And the reason we do this is that we want to, I'm going to do another round of this, just turn it, you don't have to spin it. We're doing all this by hand. Again, the motor is unplugged. You never want to do this with the motor plugged in. Never. Now, look at that. I put this one in and I still got some carbon coming off, but now mostly on the end there, not so much on the side. Put it in again. And I'm still cleaning it. Again, you can decide how much cleaning you want to do. I can put the dry end here and see if anything else comes off. I'm getting, obviously I'm getting more off of the, uh, of the, of the commutator by, uh, uh, by using the wet end, but I always like to have that dry end available. So let's try it one more time. Let me, let me zoom out a little bit. See, so you guys can maybe see more of what I'm doing here. Again, dipping one end here of the cotton swab. Okay. And I'm going to put it down in the shaft and again, turning the commutator, not forcing the swab hard, just holding it with my finger. All you're doing is holding it against the commutator. Don't push it. Don't smash it. Uh, be gentle. Um, it doesn't take much because most of the work is happening. Now, look at that. That's the third try. I'm just getting a little bit left. I have really, I've really cleaned up that commutator. Now, does that mean the commutator is shiny like a new penny? No. In fact, it may still have some of this carbon on it and it may have also, and you'll see this when we do the, the motor series video on the Singer Slanomatic motor, you'll have a better view of that commutator. Uh, now, there may even still be a little bit of patina on the copper, but we have just removed a lot of the soiling, okay? A lot of the soiling that would have been basically it, it, what happens is when that commutator gets covered in that black carbon soot, it still runs. These machines run and run, but it's basically getting a little less uh, horsepower, if you will. The motor is not giving as much power as it could, and I don't know the percentage. Maybe it's a small percentage, maybe it's greater, but it sure is nice to be able to um, to be able to, to sort of, it's almost like a tuning of your motor, but again, you're not taking the motor apart. You are not having to take the commutator down and sand it. And again, I used to do this with all of my motors. And then I realized I was losing, I was losing enough copper that I thought, well, let me try it without the sanding. And I believe I'm probably getting about 90% cleansing with this method. 
right? It's a chemical method with the uh, rubbing alcohol, and I'm not having to sand. I'm not saying that sanding is bad. It may actually be, you know, all that. It may be greater, but I've had such good success with this, and you can save yourself time, and you will certainly save yourself life in that motor. Because some people, and I've seen their videos, some people really know how to sand these commutators. Um, and I've done it before, and I know how, but it, like I said, if you if you get just a little too rough, that copper comes right off, and you really shorten the life of your, uh, of your motor that way. So, now, I've got this brush here back in my uh, hand. Before I put this in, I'm going to basically... Uh, mentioned that you will you can take the bottom and I'll do this later when I go through the full restoration but the the brush that is underneath this one you do the same thing you'll take the nut off you'll slowly and carefully hold make sure that the brush but remember it's under spring tension hold it don't let it go flying it'll come it should come right out and then of course you'll take you'll do the same procedure guys you'll take uh, your uh, cotton swab Use high quality swabs. You don't want the swab shredding inside there, and it shouldn't if you're careful. Uh, you will dip one end in the alcohol, and then, of course, you'll insert it into the motor brush shaft underneath. And really, what you, what you can do at that point is essentially, basically use the alcohol to clean that motor brush shaft. Because the commutator has, as you've seen, we've already cleaned it from up top. So if you take the bottom brush out, you can do that. And of course, when you do it, you will be inspecting the other brush to make sure it's the same length. Now, the proper way when you re replace brushes is to replace both of them at the same time. But you never know. It could be that, um, that someone uh, replaced one brush, which they shouldn't do. Brushes are not expensive at all. But if they did, you don't want to have a brush that's too short because if a brush wears away completely it can cause damage to the motor and that would be a shame my god it's a 1940s motor and she still runs so um but anyway that is something that you would uh you would want to do even if you clean the commutator you know it's clean go ahead and take the bottom brush out guys and that way you know uh you will know that you have basically uh you you You've seen both brushes, both brushes look great, and you don't have to worry about it. You don't really have to think about that. Uh, and that's kind of nice. And now you can say, I've looked at the brushes, they're great. Here, let's see, while we're here, let me just do it, because some of you are gonna ask me, hey, what did that other brush look like? So let's, let's see. Okay, and again, the screw here is coming out fine. In fact, I'll probably just loosen this one by hand, because I just started it with the little, okay, and I can feel the spring pushing against me. Keep your hand there. And there she is. Now let me zoom in because that may not be as easy for you guys to see. There we go. You can see the spring hanging right there. And we'll pull her out. Whoop! Plopped right out. Didn't even have to pull. Now, this is what I wanted to see. It's what I expected to see, but I don't like to assume anything here. Both brushes are the same. Brushes typically wear at the same rate because they're, like I say, they're like twins. They're, they're opposite they're uh, um, opposite of each other, but they do the same thing. They have the same function. But again, we don't know the repair history of the machine. And if somebody decided to replace one and not the other, who knows? Uh, I like knowing. And again, you can see uh, uh, this one on my right. I'm going to wipe it down. I'll wipe down that brush. Make sure it's clean. Uh, here, we can take, uh, we can take uh, uh, the swab, like I was mentioning to you all. Put it up into the shaft underneath. And there we go. I pulled out. This didn't come off the commutator. We already know that's clean. But what I did was basically I, this was some of the carbon that was built up in the, uh, here we'll, we'll dip, we'll dip in alcohol once more in the, uh, in the, in the shaft that the brush goes in here. And I'll even take a, I'll take a dry uh, cotton swab and kind of, kind of roll it around in there. And that's, that should be fine. We've gotten both of our brush uh, areas cleaned now. So <clears throat> there you go guys. This is a way to both inspect and clean, uh, inspe excuse me, inspect your brushes for this motor and then clean the commutator, clean the shaft that the brushes go in and um, and there you go. There you are. You are ready to, uh, I will be putting the brushes back in. Here I'll show you. I'll actually demonstrate 
pardon me, I will demonstrate with the upper brush because it's easier to see uh, based on the positioning of this motor. Um, but you're going to do the bottom brush the same way. Okay. Now remember what I was saying. Uh, you want to look at the tip of the brush because there's a curve that moves in one direction, right? Not here, but here on this particular one here. Let's put it there and see if you guys can see that. Okay. So this brush has a curve to it and that's the curve. It has the curve because it was facing, it was facing um, in this direction because of course the commutator guys is, is like a, it's like a uh, disc and it's, you see more of my finger is that's, that's the direction it's facing to my, to my right. Okay. So I want the curve on the brush to seat back on the curve that it's formed ever since it was on the, um, uh, let's tilt this, this camera just a bit. Um, we want the brush to have its curve seated back where it was originally. And here it is. You can feel it with your finger. Like if I do this, I'm like, no, that's not right. But this here, I can tell that the curve is on this plane. So I want that curve to face the same direction as the commutator. So I'm going to put the brush back in and it goes in. You don't have to fight. It's, there's plenty of room in there. Now, remember the, the little plastic set. Uh, it's really like a screw that sort of holds the, the uh, brush spring uh, taut. It puts tension on the spring and holds it against the commutator. Again, we'll see a commutator in a, in a different video. Um, now, I'm going to put that little notch there. It's like a little round uh, peg and it's going to sit right in the center of that spring, which makes it nice. It, it makes it easier to... Now you can see that the spring has a place to kind of hang on to the little screw there. Zoom in a little bit more. And so I'm kind of holding it. You can see it, that little, uh, the little raised area in the center of the screw. And I'm going to put that, let's let me zoom in more. I can't tell what you guys are able to see there. Yeah. So you can see that little, that little raised, uh, uh, spot in the middle of the screw is going to fit right in the middle of the spring. Now, <laughs> and this is kind of a part that you don't want to have to have to laugh at yourself or you'll be chasing around uh, your house looking for this thing. So I'm going to push in with this little plastic screw and notice I'm holding it because that, that screw wants to bounce it out. It wants to, to send it flying. But I'm going to hold, hold on to the screw and I'm just going to turn it by hand. It's not hard. Um, and the other good thing about turning it by hand, you want to push down and until you feel it, actually, let's bring this back out so you can see a little bit better. I want to push down until the screw starts to, to find the thread that it belongs in. Now, if it doesn't want to do that, if it, it's because it's right now it's wiggling, it's trying to play, play here. What I can do is I can take my screwdriver, but don't let go of this thing because she's going to go flying and you don't want it flying up at the ceiling or anywhere else. So I'm going to take my screwdriver and I'm going to put it in the middle of the, the slot. It's a straight, straight edge screwdriver, screw head. Now, if you look, you'll see where I've got the screwdriver. Okay. Let me get my arm out of the way there. <clears throat> okay. So I've got the screwdriver on here and I'm going to turn to see, I'm waiting up. Oh, there she went. There's nothing like seeing the instructor do something to, to learn. <laughs> okay. It's happened before and I have it. It, it, it didn't go too far. Okay. So let's try putting it back on the spring. We're going to hold it down. I'm going to hold it down with my screwdriver and I'm going to hold it thumb finger screwdriver. And I need that cap to be at a certain angle to make sure. Okay. And you'll know, see, I'm turning the screwdriver guys. And it's, you can tell, you, you'll know when it's threaded properly because it won't fight you. If this, if I was turning this screwdriver and it was fighting me, you want to stop because remember it's plastic. You don't want to strip this little cap. You really, it's, it's important. It may not look important, but it's holding your brush in, brush in place. Okay. So I'm going to uh, turn this and it doesn't want to keep going. That tells me it's not quite on the right angle. Let's try it again because we, here we go. Let's try that. All right.
Okay, this time as I turned it, I could tell it's seated and it was turning. Now, let's talk about tightness here because these are your brushes and I know you want them. Remember, the spring is going to apply a lot of tension for the brush to sit on that commutator inside, so don't worry about that. This cap, I'm turning it, it is now seated. I can tell it's moving in the threads as it should. Um, and I'm not putting oil on that plastic <coughs> screw cap, okay? Because I want it positioned in a way where it's, see now it's wanting to wiggle out on me. Come here, you. All right, here we go. Now it's seating again. Now, when I screw this down, okay, you turn it, and then as soon as you start to feel it snug up, stop right there, right? I can feel it. I'm turning, it's starting to, it's starting to snug down. And as soon as I hit that point, snug, stop right there. Don't go any farther. This screw is tough. It can last more lifetimes, more, more generations. But don't over torque it. Be gentle with it, right? And you want to do that even when plastic's new. Again, uh, it's worked fine. It will continue to work fine. There you go. And I will do, <coughs> again, I'll, I'll insert the bottom brush. Um, we're so zoomed in here, you wouldn't be able to see that. Okay. Now, when you go to do the bottom one, you want to do the same thing. You can look in the light sometimes if you can't tell. You can see in the light when I'm holding this that you'll see the curvature on the edge of the brush. Okay. And that's, again, you want the same direction. You want the curve part to line up with the curve of the uh of the commutator, which of course is right here. It's a big ring that's running like that. Now, this one, because it's on the bottom, I gotta kinda hold it and then I gotta get the little screw cap to put in there. And this one can be, uh, this can be an exercise, you know, uh, I've got it lined up with the, with the screw. Let's zoom back in here. And I'm gonna move the camera so you guys can hopefully see what I'm doing. Kind of an odd angle. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing I did above, only I'm doing it without being able to totally see, but you can do this by feel in a way. And again, I'm going to take it, I'm going to hold it against the spring and wait to see if I can get the threads of this little cap to seat. And it's just waiting for me to do that. Okay, I feel it turning. Okay, I can feel it turning. In fact, I just, I hand tighten it, but again, I'm going to go back with my little screwdriver I can get under here with, and let's just make sure that it's, it's snug, not tight. Never torque these down, okay? Can I tell where I'm at here? Let's see. I'm going to make sure I'm in the screw, the screw. There we go. Okay, so I'm in here. I'm going to turn just like I did uh, on the one above, and I'm turning and I feel it snug up, boom, it's, we're good to go. And you can always, you can, you can actually get uh, below, you can stoop down and look up and you'll know if it's seated flat or not, right? And there you go. That is how you uh, check and clean both your brushes. Uh, you wanna check that your brushes are in good shape, these were. And this is a way to clean a part of the motor that some, some people have tried to do by sanding, and they've, some of them have done a great job. And I used to do that, but I decided that I would get more life out of the motor, and I would get 90% of, uh, of you know, anything that was blocking my current <clears throat> from, a, you know, from when it was, say, uh, shiny copper brand new. To get down to that state, I'm gonna have to shorten the life of the motor. And I think getting, you know, 90, 95% of the cleanliness to that commutator back by doing it this way. Um, that means you don't have to disassemble this and you can, um, uh, you can check your brushes. And so that is a part of uh, maintenance for this motor. Now I have seen uh, motors of this type by the 1950s, they were still using this motor, but they had changed it. Okay, they had changed and when we, in the next installment, I'm gonna show you guys how to change and service the grease wicks. But if you may have one of the later versions of this motor, it has bearings, but they are, you can't access the grease. They've already taken away our ability to lubricate 
the bearings because they don't want the bearings to last forever. Uh, and again, getting things to be disposable started a long time ago, but this motor was not. It has grease uh, uh, access to its bearings, which is really cool. And in the next video that I do on this, we'll tackle the grease uh, bearings. Uh, I'll show you how to replace the wicking. Um, first, we'll take out the springs, the old wicks. We're going to clean out this area. We're going to insert new grease. And then we'll install the new wicks and we'll get her ship shape for the bearing part of the motor. But uh, I'll do that in a separate video, and that way you guys don't have to hunt through a long video trying to find what part's what. Anyway, thank you all for watching. This is the beginning of what will probably be uh, a multi-video series because there are a lot of things to say about motors. And this, this series of, uh, of uh, motor videos is about how to maintain and uh, provide maintenance to a motor uh, that's very different than if you're going to have to take the motor apart because it needs to be rebuilt. That is an entirely different topic, and I'll talk more about when that's appropriate and when it's not. But for, me, for some of you, you simply have a motor, if your motor is in great shape, as this one was, and you think, gosh, does the motor need anything from me? It might just need what you just saw here, and with a few other steps such as the bearing uh, cleaning and greasing, which we will tackle in the next video. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate you uh, giving me suggestions for uh, types of videos to make on these old, on these uh, old iron side machines. Um, they are incredible, but just like any other real machine, they need maintenance. <clears throat> and it's it's incredible how forgiving the machines are because this machine may have gone decades, and I mean decades, without any maintenance other than just getting, you know, sewing machine oil, and yet it still runs, and they're very forgiving once they've gotten the maintenance they deserve. So this is like it's 50,000 mile tune-up if you think about those of you who have to uh, deal with car maintenance. But anyway, thanks again for watching, guys. If you have any questions or comments, just list them below, and I will... Uh, We'll see you on the next video in the series. Take care.